An array is an arrangement of objects into rows and columns. Arrays are useful in helping students understand multiplication. Okay, it looks like you guys did a great job building your arrays. Is there anybody who would like to share one that they built? Okay, Alyssa? What multiplication sentence did you write to go with your array? Six times five equals 30. Excellent. So you can see in her array, she built one that has six columns and five rows. Now, if I took this array and I turned it this way, I would now have five columns and six rows, but still 30 blocks. So it doesn't matter in what way we have the numbers written, we're gonna get the same answer. This is called the commutative property of multiplication. And mine is a seven times four array. And instead we did it five plus two and multiplied it as two separate questions. It may be easier to remember or have a strategy for figuring out our tables if we've forgotten what seven times four is. So it would look like this on the board have an array that would be 5 times 4 and an array that would be 2 times 4. Which would give us our answer of 28. This is a really good strategy because it gives kids the opportunity to visualize what they're multiplying, to really understand what the numbers are that they are working with. It also allows them to work with easier numbers, friendlier numbers, instead of trying to work with the whole number itself. This same strategy of breaking numbers into friendlier numbers to multiply can be used when multiplying two-digit numbers. And we'll do 36 times 42. Now this can be a difficult number to work with on its own, but if we wanted to make this a little easier, how could we break up these numbers so a little easier to work with? How could we write these as friendlier numbers to multiply? Jack? 30 plus six times 40 plus two. Great, good job. Okay, so I've taken this question and I've made it into an array. And if you take a look at the smart board, you can see the array that would come from a question like this. There's a lot more squares and it's a much bigger array, but it is still a really good way to show up show how we are multiplying the numbers and how we can break them up into parts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at each part of our array to try to figure out what 36 times 42 is. So the first part of the array we're going to look at is the big blue section. So this big blue section would be 30 times 40. So if we were to start with that part, how many squares or little blocks would there be inside that 30 times 40 array? Evan? 1,200. Very good, there would be 1,200 blocks inside of that array. To complete the question, we also need to multiply the simple equations of 30 times 2, 40 times 6, and 6 times 2. By adding these products together, we can easily determine the solution to our question. Does anyone know what that total would be? Rusev? 1,512. Good, 1,512. Good answer, Rusev, well done. I'm gonna get you to work on a problem on your own, draw the array that goes with it, and label all the parts. So the problem I'm gonna get you to work on today is 53 times 28. Okay, give that one a try. We'll see how you do. It is important for students to explain their strategy to others. I split up 53 into 50 plus three, and 28 into 20 plus eight, and then I put it into an array. Then I added it all up all four numbers up, and it equaled 1,484. Today, we're going to look at multiplying these same larger numbers without necessarily needing to draw the array, but instead always visualizing one and remembering what the array looked like and how we're breaking up our numbers. The problem we're gonna work on today is 23 times 54. So if we were to take this number and break it up into easier parts to work with, what would we break it up into? Brianna? 20 plus three times 50 plus four. Good. 20 plus three times 50 plus four. Now, if I were going to write that as an array or visualize it as an array, this is what it might look like. The teacher is making the connection between the question and the drawing of an array to help students see how the written work reflects the array. So we have 20 plus 3 times 50 plus 4. So if we were to start by looking at this array here, which is 
20 times 50. Can anyone tell me how many parts or how many squares would be in that array? Owen? 1,000. That's correct, 1,000. And over here, we can see in the question itself, here's our 20 times 50. And 20 times 50 equals 1,000. To complete the question, we also need to multiply the simple equations of 20 times 4, 3 times 50, and 3 times 4. Once we have all the parts of the array completed, or all the parts of the question multiplied, we can add them all together to get the total. Does anyone know what the total would be? Marissa? 1,242. Perfect, good job. 1,242. Once students understand how to multiply using an array by breaking numbers into parts, they no longer need to draw the array. I've been teaching for a long time, and I used to just teach the algorithm method that we learned you know, when I was a kid. And when I, I was hesitant, as anybody is, to change to the new strategies, because change is always difficult. But what I noticed immediately from the year I was only using the algorithm to the year when the kids were allowed to use arrays and other strategies was an increase in the number of kids that understood how to multiply. 